this man just started to lost to us and can simply be described as all bark and no bite even though we had a lot of chances to at least score one goal we couldn't do it because of poor decision making this was a better performance than what we have seen in recent weeks especially compared to teams like burnley mouth or crystal palace but in the end we still did fall short the thing is arsenal were even playing that well arsenal were actually pretty bad but that's the thing we don't even have to play well to beat manchester united if you are a team who has any decent footballing capability you will beat manchester united that's the sole story of this whole season talking about football ability let's talk about casemiro i know casemiro is incompatible at center back that it's not his natural position but casemiro is a veteran player he has been one of the best central defensive midfielders for years and a player like that is this uncomfortable in a new position it was a very simple and basic mistake all he had to do was get back in line at time he was just so slow look at this gap he is nowhere near the defensive line even johnny evans who is 36 even he is in line and casemiro is not it just feels like casemiro doesn't care enough at united now after this mistake which led to the goal it wasn't only this even when havertz was on the byline casemiro was still out of position casemiro needed to be closer to on on had to cut the cut back angle but once again casemiro was too far out he was out of position to cancel that havertz pass to sart that's two mistakes two mistakes that, that led to the goal two mistakes that cost us the game casemiro did play better after this mistake right but the damage was all already done and at this point it feels like casemiro is definitely one of the players who's going to leave even fabrizio has confirmed that casemiro and sardi are going to be one of the topics for the summer transfer window i do hope we can get some big money for him because getting a young cdm is going to be very expensive if you have liked my video so far then i would really appreciate if you can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of the community and to be notified of future uploads now this match was it all bad we actually had some good signs like i've been talking in my last few videos ten hag was making two major mistakes the left back position and the right wing i have been seeing for so many weeks just play dalo at left back and play a mother right wing and look what happens when ten hag made these changes right we were playing so much better dalo was phenomenal at left back he provided sala he was great going forward he was great in the league i saw him so many times stepping into midfield and in attacking positions seamlessly dribbling crossing making good passes and not only this amad amad was probably a man of the match it just he got so much composure great dribbling passing you know long range even the switching the plants amad was the main player for our team and he was constantly creating trouble on the right wing it's just so sad that he got injured so early otherwise we probably could have got a bot in a goal and this just shows that amad needs more game time going forward he cannot be a 5 minute 10 minute sub especially in front of anthony moving on amrabat had a great game amrabat was showing qualities of why we actually wanted to get him this uh, in the last summer window he showed it in this match he was covering ground he was covering uh, covering for you know Arsenal counter attacks he was always ready to take the ball from onara like showing himself for the ball not hiding from the ball like mctominay like in this match we had mctominay and abrabat both did you even notice mctominay doing anything but you could notice amrabat being there that's the difference of experience or like an actual central defensive midfielder brings and next to him main was playing so much better because he had someone who could cover for the defensive responsibilities meno despite being the youngest on the field was probably showing the most composure out of all of our team meno had great passing great dribbling getting out of close spaces tight spaces creating for the wingers right meno is one of the players we have to build around for the future he is young he is talented he has composure he is everything we need in that team and talking about young players let's move on to the natural and oil the hate that these two are getting after this match is just simply disgusting 
I have seen so many tweets of not only fans but journalists slagging these two off. Garnacho and Oylin, the two players who have been running their socks off, putting in performances, good performances, putting in energy, passion and showing that they actually care about the club. Not like the same senior players. Garnacho has literally been one of our best attackers this season. Despite being his first full season at racket. He's only 19. Yes, he lacks composure at the final decision. Yes, he needs to improve. But he is 19. And he has been putting in performance week in week out. I saw so many people saying Ganacho is in worthy of being a United player. That he shouldn't be near the first 11. If everyone is fit. Are these people crazy or what? In this match, Ganacho showed that he is in best at his uh, final decision making. At so many times when he should have crossed, he shot. When he should have shot, he just missed. And sometimes when he made the crosses, it was just to no one. But these other aspects he can improve because he's just 19. In his first season, he has done a lot more than a senior pros. And yet people are just blaming him for it. The same goes for Oilin. You know the crazy thing about Oilin is that I've been saying for so many weeks that he's getting unnecessary criticism. And look at this again. This guy, right, Samuel Luckers, is he is one of the main reasons that the club is so toxic. Because he is the biggest league at the club. And he's a disgrace. I'll probably make a video to Samuel Toxic Media and I'll link it above when I do make it. But the thing with Hoyland is Hoyland has one of the best conversion rates, right? Out of many prolific strikers. He has the most goals out of any under-21 player in the Premier League. Most goals. And despite all this, he receives the fewest passes out of all strikers. And we have only created 5 chances for him in 8 games. 5 chances in 8 games for a main striker. And yet people are blaming Hoyland. Right? The problem with Hoyland are two. First, he's been playing, he's been played as a target man. Right? He has been forced to play as a guy who pulls the ball up from 40 yard wings. That's the job a 36-year-old striker does, who cannot run anymore. That's a veteran's role, not a young striker's role. But the issue is, he's being a target man only in the build-up. He is not a target man in the box. Like, a target man should be getting crosses every time. He should be getting through balls every time, but that never happens for him. He's only target man only when the build-up happens. And that's the biggest issue. Hoyland is strong, he's fast, he's clinical, and yet there are no crosses or through balls for him. How is a young striker supposed to score goals when he doesn't get chances? And the biggest and the issue in addition to all this is that there is no substitution for him. He cannot even get a rest because Martial is just unknown. Nobody knows where he is. He cannot learn from a senior striker. Our coaching staff is bad, as you all know it. And he's trying to learn on the job in his first debut season at United at just 2021. How can people keep blaming Poland? It's just crazy to me. There are a lot of United fans, a lot of United fans, and of course, toxic media, who are trying to bring these players down, who are trying to do anything to insult them. And people are falling for it. So I do hope, if you're watching this video, that you do not forget the context, that they do not forget the previous performances that these players have put in of carrying their team for the whole season and do not write them off. These are the three players we have to build a club around who will be leading our club for the next future. Let's just touch on a few more topics. The first, of course, Old Trafford is collapsing. We have all known how bad players are, how they have mismanaged the club and how they see that it as an only a piggy bank. They have only taken money out. They have never put their own money. We, we all know this. And we saw it again after this awesome match. Just look at this. This thing. Right. The now famous Old Trafford waterfall. This happened after the uh, awesome match. Right. And this picture right here is from 2019 April. Five years ago. A similar picture. 
Blazers have brought in this club inside out, and it just shows year after year how bad the infrastructure is. This time, the league was not only on the roof; multiple sections of the stadium was flooded. Whether it be different sections of the seat, hospitality, even the away dressing room had water leaking through. That's just how bad the condition of the club is. And the funny thing is that within 15 minutes of these videos circulating online, articles started coming out. That's where Jim Ratcliffe is meeting, you know, politicians to make a new stadium, that the repairs are happening, that there are plans for new stadium. Like all of this blazer spinning up media, which we have seen for the years, it's happening again. They want to distract the media, like they want to distract the fans by saying about a new stadium. Like, this is not a disgrace currently. That one of the biggest clubs in the world is having such poor infrastructure of the sea. Stadium leaking in the heavy day. Moving on, let's also give up a contract to Manchester United women for winning a trophy. That at least a woman football inside is useful. That they are achieving something. Unlike the men's side, who is just completely useless this season. So yeah, it's great to see the... United club moving forward with the women's side and it would be exciting to see if they can reach new heights. And lastly, it cannot be a Manchester United's week without more injuries. New week, new injuries. Mount is once again injured. He's probably been a one of the worst signings this summer because we could have literally got him for free in the summer. He hasn't even paid for us much and he, and he just seems to get injury after injury after injury. And Shaw, sure, Shaw was coming back from injury, he was almost match fit, but his injury relapsed and he's injured again. But the crazy thing is Rooney. Rooney on Sky Sports has said that there are players who are fit, but who are faking their injury, that they don't want to play. You know, that's massive coming from Rooney. Because, let's be honest, these injuries which have happened this season, right, 65 plus, they are very unusual. I've never seen anything like this in my 10, 20 years of watching football. Anything like this. And it makes a lot of sense that players are taking injury now. Just to avoid getting criticized. I don't know exactly who these players are, but we might have some guests. Now, if you have made it this far into the video, then I would really appreciate it. And click on the like and subscribe button below to support the channel. And if you want to see how bad we were, against the palace and what mistakes you made then click on this video right here and i will see you all again after the next match is against newcastle i think i'm really hoping for a win because they have defeated us like three or four times in a row but i don't think that's possible with this squad so yeah i will see you all again then thank you for watching my video goodbye